You see all these mountains behind me, all the way down? That's all Aztec sandstone from the Jurassic and Triassic period. As a geologist, I can tell you right now, there's not one speck of gold in those mountains or in the dolomite that's on the back of those mountains. Now you've got iron oxide and you've got hematite mixed in all this sandstone. And that's why you got these red colors as it oxidizes out. Now knowing the geology is gonna save you so much time because you can literally look at an entire mountain range and say, I'm 99% sure there's no gold in there. Yes, sandstone can have gold in it, but not this sandstone. And especially not the dolomite that's behind it. Now the dolomite does host a lot of other minerals through replacement deposits such as galena, which is where you get your lead and silver from, and sphalerite, which is a zinc sulfide. The mountains are full of that, but not a lot of gold, very small amounts. Only a few locations do these mountains actually give up gold, and there's a reason for that, and I'm gonna teach you the geology of that, and I'm even gonna tell you where these locations are at. This is one of many different types of geological maps that you're probably going to see when you're researching mines. Geological maps are great if you know how to read them and interpret them. There's a lot of information in there that will correspond with your USGS reports and you can start localizing areas that might have potential gold deposits. And when I say gold deposits, I'm talking load gold. Now what you can do is overlay templates of known gold mines, abandoned gold mines, over the top of these geological maps and you'll start to see patterns forming. And the pattern is gonna be where you start having all these thrust faults and contact zones, you're gonna see a lot of these gold mines are sitting right on it or right near it. This is a great example of a geological map that has a template of existing mines laid over the top of it. This is drawn up by a mining company that's been sampling good springs for the last couple of years. Here you can see all the different rock structures and the fault zones that are incorporated in it, making it very easy to find potential load deposits. I wanted to show you something real quick about some of these starter shafts or prospect pits. Look at this. You can see the vein dipping at about an 80 degree, 75, 80 degree dip. And it's got a east-west strike to it. And they would follow this thing down. That's why a lot of your shafts sit on an incline because they're following the vein down. And this one didn't look like it was very profitable. What, why I'm telling you this is because when you come out to these old gold mining districts, look for these prospect shafts. A lot of times they could have been mere inches away from something profitable or they were only finding one ounce per ton. And back then that wasn't a lot for them. They, they couldn't survive on one ounce per ton. Remember 20 bucks an ounce back then? And also look for their high grade pile. See it right here? I mean, it's a no brainer. This is a high grade pile. It's a little stack off to the side. And then if it was any good, they'd put it on pack mills, put it on a switchback and take it to the mill. See if they could get paid for it. That's what you're looking for. So I'm going to run this ridge until I can find it. But I'm not going to do nothing until you smash that like button. Smash it hard! Look at this. Found a big old block of wood out in the middle of nowhere. That means I'm on to something. And if you look down in the wash, you can see beautiful outcroppings of hematite and iron oxides down there. So come on, let's go. So along the way, I'm gonna give you geology tips and tricks like this ugly looking rock right here. Well, what does it look like? It's black and white and red all over. It's a newspaper, no, it's... It's black and white, like a Dalmatian. This is granite diorite. It's easy to remember because it looks like a Dalmatian. Dalmatian, diorite, granite diorite. We're down here in the bottom. Look at this beautiful outcropping. And look at the bedrock here. Mm, mm, mm. 
good place to sample right here. Look at that. Mm, this is some good looking bedrock too. Now it's not as rough and as angular as I would prefer, but it'd still be worth sampling. Now when you sample, don't sample down here, sample up here. Look for the high water mark, see that? So the low water, there's gonna be so much turbulence and pressure, it's gonna blow out most of your gold. Get up here on the benches and where the high water lines are at. And this principle can be used even in areas like California. Don't get down in the bottom, get up where the high water lines are at. Less pressure, gold's gonna drop out. Look at this beautiful green rock. This has a lot of olivine, a lot of epidote, and a lot of chloride in it. This is the mineral assemblages that you like to see when you're out in these gold producing districts. And of course, hematite and magnetite, especially in these giant outcroppings like this. What the heck is that? I know what that is, but I don't know what this is. It's some kind of bag. Honest, baby, it's not my bag. <laughs> you know I had to say that. I'm gonna find out what's in that thing. There could be coins or gold bars in there. Wow, look at this huge epidote basalt dike. And look, you can see that it has been sheared because of there's a fault in there. Snapped it right off and pushed it over. That is so cool. my first sign of anybody being out here looks like an old beer can you guys see something unusual here that that should not be here there's another one there and another one there I know why they're here too you can see them on the tops of the mountains it's because this area used to be underwater and it was flooded out and this is all the material that washed over the top and deposited here because all this rock came from mountains far away. And that is the same flood, glacial melt, that helped carve out the Grand Canyon about 35 million years ago. There's some more weird looking fabric that we're finding everywhere. I got metal over here too, corrugated metal. It's a good thing I ate my Wheaties today, huh? Big old honking pipe in the ground. I bet you they're pumping water with this pipe. Question is, where does it go? They're driving me crazy. I got too much stuff to look at and not enough sunlight. All right, I know, I know, enough jaw jacking, Jeff. Just get your butt up there. We wanna see what's up there. Look at this beautiful road right here. This is probably the one that connects to that one over there. See that? Oh, this is a good one. But what the heck did they put it here for? I could spend a whole week out here. You can see that somebody's been walking on this trail a lot. Right there, this used to be some kind of road. The gravel that I'm standing on, the aggregate, this is not indigenous to this area. If you look, it's completely out of place. Even the geology of it doesn't match anything in this area. Like I said, it was brought in by massive flooding from glacial melt. And you can see, if you look at aerial photographs of this area, you'll see where it's capped off on the tops of these ridges and saddles. Look at this, granitic rock and a whole bunch of loose slough sitting here. I mean, look at this, this stuff doesn't even belong here. See that? And you can see it way over in the distance where it's sitting on top of the ridge. Just more evidence of a huge glacial melt that created the Grand Canyon. Here's another good point right here, look at this. See this? This shouldn't be here. See that, all this loose gravel? Down there, down there, all the way down. There's a beautiful outcrop right there, you see it? And then somebody drove a cross cut right into it. I know, I know, I'm looking. Ooh, look what I found. Somebody's been digging. Somebody's been digging. Nice. Look at that beautiful looking material. Somebody was digging right here. Looks like they drove a cross cut in, see it? Right here. That's a beautiful looking outcrop. Holy cow, look at this, look. Jeez, iron forever. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful looking? Oh my goodness. That's solid iron. Holy cow. Oh, this would be worth prospecting. Look at that. Ah. Nice. But I know there's gold in it. I can tell just by looking at it. Look at these veins, this is incredible. Look at this. 
See that? Nice. That's the main material right there. See all that bread shaded quartz? See where they dug it all out right there? Man, they were going to town on this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a sample. We're gonna see what's in here. And then if there's any gold, I'll leave snapshots up at the end of the video. But man, this is beautiful looking material. Look at this shaft. If you didn't know this shaft was here, you'd just walk right up to it and fall in. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, nah, this is nothing. It's just a little prospect. I don't see any mine dump. I don't see anything, but take a look at this. Look at this. It's not that deep, but it sure would hurt if you were to fall into it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, they're chasing that vein down. They're chasing that vein down. See the track? Look at that beautiful, well-defined outcrop right there. Nothing but hematite, magnetite, and hopefully gold. Well, I found something. It looks like somebody's been trying to hide it. Look at this. See this? Doesn't look like much of anything, but look at this. See that? Somebody tried to... Look at that. Somebody's trying to hide this. But you know me, if there's a mine, I'm gonna find it, especially if it's got gold in it. What the heck is that? Look at this platform right here, you see it? That looks like an old stove, don't it? Look at that. That is an old stove. Nice. And that looks like it was for a blacksmith shop for the anvil. That's definitely an old stove, it's upside down. But that is an old stove. So if I had to guess, there was some type of a, a base camp right here. They usually have big stoves like that if they're gonna have a bunch of guys working. And I can see remnants of a bed, lots of beds. Look at this, look at this. See this, this is used for beds, for the cots. There's another one right here. And see how they're tied to these frames? These are the frames of the cots. And there's another one over there. There's an old spring right there. So yeah, they must have had some kind of a large camp right here. Imagine what it looked like back in the day. This thing must have been monstrous. Definitely where they had the bunkhouse for all the workers for the mine and the mill. And here's the old mill. And of course, here's the concrete foundations for the drive. And of course, the boiler sat there. And then of course, there's the flue for the boiler that sat there. And in case you missed it, look at the ore that comes out of this area. Isn't that just the prettiest stuff you ever saw, huh? That's what I thought you'd say. Wow, look at that. That is the faceplate of the boiler. And you can see the flue tubes. So where's the rest of it? You imagine hauling that up here? I can't even, that thing's got to weigh a ton, just the faceplate. Imagine the whole tank with all the flue tubes in it. Wow, these people were tough as nails. This is a good place to run a backpack. See how sharp and angular that is? And it cuts the wash at a 90 degree. That is fantastic. And this is a gold producing district, which makes it even better. And if I had to guess, this looks like they were doing some hand stacking right here. Clean this out. Yep, look at this. See how they got all this piled up on the side? And over here, that's hand stacking. There's gold in this wash. We'll have to come back later with a backpack. Black sand everywhere in here. Look at that, just gobs and gobs of it. Gobs and gobs of black sand. Ooh, these are nice little traps too for gold, especially these pockets like this right there, especially if there's like rocks to hold the gold in. That is fantastic. Oh wow, look at all this metal in here. Probably for a water tank. Yeah, this is the base of a water tank. Huge. Look at that, tons and tons of metal. So you know that there's a mine around here somewhere. Ah, looks like somebody beat me to it. Ooh, it's warm in here. It's really warm. Here's video that we shot many years ago of the mine that we're talking about. And right here is another good example. You can see the limonite and you can see jerosite and plumble jerosite in there as well. And then of course you have these little halos of copper around these lenses. And a lot of them have a tremendous amount of gold in them and some of them have nothing at all. So you have to sample them to find out which ones are the richest. Also, when you do find a large pocket, you'll see gold like this, which is crystalline gold in nature. Oh yeah, look at that. See all that? Not bad, huh? 
See if I can get some of that black sand off of there. Look at that. Oh, now if that ain't beautiful, I don't know what is. There's some wire gold right there. I don't know if you can see that. But all the gold is in these little pockets like this in this and there's lots and lots of it. And don't forget, at the end of each month, we give away a brand new Gold Monster 1000 metal detector, bags of pay dirt from our drift mine, and silver bars. And if you want to get involved with that, all you got to do is look for the little icon at the end of the video that looks like that. You're going to click on it, make a $10 pledge, and you're in like Flynn. And I'll see you on the next video.